so the two countries are a study in contrast for the longest time they were neck and neck in the terms of the, in terms of the economy until the early 90s or mid 1990s i think india and china had the same sort of economic uh, growth more or less the same amount of uh, overall gdp that's what we had now the thing is that the chinese their rise was aided and, and abetted by the americans the americans sought to use china as a counterweight to the ussr in the 1960s the ussr had decided to nuke china over a border clash over a border dispute the americans intervened and uh, threatened the ussr with a nuclear attack if they went ahead with a nuclear attack on china and then they brought china into the american camp they um, opened up the global american economic system to the, to the chinese integrated the chinese economy with their system and that's what uh, precipitated the eventual significant rise of china so the americans created this great monster their own biggest rival and like you said they missed all the red flags of what the chinese actually intended intended to do the americans i would say naively believed that as the chinese economy would grow they would become more democratic the society would become more open they completely missed the fact that this is an, this is an eastern nation it's an asian nation it has nothing to do with these liberal democratic values china has always had an imperial system and the chinese have never been colonized they are not mentally colonized that they would start aping the western system they still have a little bit of uh, cultural and civilizational pride in their own system so that's what as their economy grew their pride also grew and what you can see now the chinese communist party would have a president politburo etc but it's actually an imperial system so the chinese system uh, xi jinping is essentially the emperor of china right now and that, that's how it is so it's an imperial dynasty now if we want to compare india and china until the 1990s the two economies were essentially at the same level then the chinese economy just took off because of their emphasis on manufacturing and because they became the manufacturing powerhouse for the for all the western nations especially the united states because they were able to manufacture high quality goods at very low prices compared to what you would have in the us so that's how they were able to grow their economy at 10% plus every year year upon year for more than one and a half or so decades and that's how they became so big india on the other hand missed the bus we did not we had the this forcible uh, set of reforms in 1991 because we were almost bankrupt uh, our government said uh, mismanage our economy but even after 91 the reforms were stop and start stop and start that's how it was so we never really followed up on the reforms and our economy did not grow at the rate that the chinese economy did so now what we need like you said the chinese don't consider us to be even a near peer competitor or any, or any such thing and they have reason not to look at look upon us as as any anything like equals because their economy as of today 2022 is five times nearly five times that of our economy so there's no question of being equals right they are a much larger power economically and when you have a large economy your military is proportionate to that economy so their military strength is also proportional proportional to their economy and our military strength is a proportional proportional to our economy so there is no question of seeing india as equals and they will not see india as equals so if india and china were to negotiate china will negotiate naturally from a position of strength and india will negotiate as not an, as an equal but as an inferior power so that's how we stand today so what india needs is minimum 7 to 8% growth per year for the next 20 years if we do that then we will reach the 10 trillion dollar mark our economy will grow to right now it's around 3 trillion dollars rough roughly give or take so if we grow at 7 or 8% minimum per year we would in the next 17 to 20 years reach the 10 trillion dollar mark and uh, 20 years is not such a long time and uh, hopefully we should grow at at more than that if we can pull off 10% plus growth for a long period of time 10 15 years then we will reach that mark faster once you reach the 10 trillion dollar economy mark you are a great power nobody can deny that you will be one of the t- top 3 powers in the world so as of today only india has the potential of reaching that position the uk can't do it the french cannot do it the germans can't do it the japanese their their economy is stagnating uh, brics nations only india can do it and no other economy is able to is, is in a position to reach the, that position india has such a big population our per capita gdp is so low and we have so many resources we have so many talented people so we have all the potential in the world to reach at least 10 trillion dollars in the next 20 years in the next 30 40 years we could reach 20 trillion dollars if we get our uh, ducks in the right row so if the if what the government needs to do see i am not an economist so i cannot give you specific uh, prescriptions of what to do what i can say is we need to ensure that the uh, 
tremendous latent potential of the Indian people is unchained and unleashed. So for that, we will need reforms. We will need to ensure that whatever bottlenecks there are in terms of ease of doing business, in terms of red tape and all that, all of that needs to be removed. The government has done significant, uh, significantly good work. I mean, the GST has unleashed the economy. Until before the GST was in, uh, in place, we had this Octroi system, which essentially did not allow one state to trade with another without giving significant taxes and so many delays. So the GST has opened up the entire Indian economy and integrated the, the nation as into one cohesive whole. Uh, and then we have the UPI system and other things that have really made things much easier for people. So I hope that we build on that. I think India could be on the, on the cusp of a significant spurt of, of uh, growth. So uh, I see that India, I see the potential for India to reach $10 trillion within the next 20 years. What India needs, of course, is 20 years of peace. Because if there is warfare, and this is the this is the decade in which you could have a lot of warfare, because everything is realigning right, right now. The entire global geopolitical system is undergoing a tremendous realignment. So what India needs to reach that stage is 10, 20 years of peace. If we can manage to have peace, then we will reach that mark. So the only way to have peace is to have peace through strength. So India needs to focus on its military. India needs to fo focus on its various deterrents that will tell other uh, other powers to back off because we can fight back. So that's what India needs. Peace through strength and, and high economic growth for the next 20 years. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad, Namaskar.